Good morning, everyone, and a, and a warm welcome to our service this morning, which is the second of our services looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians while Mabub is away. I'm glad to say that Mabub returns today from holiday and so will lead us in our worship next Sunday. Before we begin our worship to God, a reminder for each of us to continue to keep in our thoughts those in need of our prayers, whose names you will have seen on the screen today and also through Laura's newsletter midweek. So please do continue to pray for them all. As always, there will be tea and coffee served in the large hall after the service. So please do come join in with some chat and fellowship if you can. One final thing to say that I also saw on the screen behind us, as this is the third Sunday of the month, there will be a prayer meeting here in the church straight after the service. So please do stay behind for our prayer meeting. If there is anything on your mind or something that is concerning you, or even if you just want to stay and support those who want to pray. With all of that said, we begin today with our call to worship, which comes from Colossians chapter 3, and it's verses 12 to 17 that we're reading. You are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then, you must clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another whenever any, any of you has a complaint against someone else. You must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. And to all these qualities add love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. The peace that Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions you make, for it is this peace that God has called you together in the one body. And be thankful. Christ's message in all its richness must live in your hearts. Teach and instruct each other with all wisdom. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Sing to God with thanksgiving in your hearts. Everything you do or say then should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as you give thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Our first hymn this morning sings of praise to God the Father through the Son. It's mission praise hymn number 708. To God be the glory, great things he hath done.
Marlon will now lead all of us in prayers together. Faithful living God, we thank you that you're not only with us here today when we come to join in prayer with you, but you're always there with us each day of our lives, waiting to hear us and bless us, no matter where we are. Help us, dear Lord, to realize that seen or unseen, you are always a guiding presence beside us. We praise and thank you, Father, for always loving us, even when we don't get things right, and giving us your Holy Spirit to walk within us and sustain us. Forgive us, Lord, when we forget the needs of others and put ourselves first. We thank you also for our churches, our families, our homes and our neighbours. Keep us always ready and willing to help with word or action and with a happy heart so that hopefully we can be faithful servants for you. Gracious, loving God, for the constancy of your love, the faithfulness of your grace and the certainty of your support, we offer our thanks humbly and now join together praying in the words of your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Marlon. Our next hymn as we worship and praise God this morning is from Mission Praise again. It's 881 and it's called Lord I Lift Your Name on High. So please once more stand if you can to sing. <coughs> As you know, our main reading today is once again taken from the book of Philippians, and this time we are reading from chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. So let's listen once more to God's word. Your life in Christ makes you strong, and his love comforts you. You have fellowship with the Spirit, and you have kindness and compassion for one another. I urge you, then, to make me completely happy, by having the same thoughts, sharing the same love, and being one in soul and mind. Don't do anything from selfish ambition or from a cheap desire to boast, but be humble towards one another 
always considering others better than yourselves. And look out for one another's interests, not just for your own. The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force. He should try to remain equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and appeared in a human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. For this reason, God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so, in honour of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven, on earth and in the world below will fall on their knees and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So then, dear friends, as you always obeyed me when I was with you, it is even more important that you obey me now while I am away from you. Keep on working with fear and trembling to complete your salvation, because God is always at work in you to make you willing and able to obey his own purpose. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Before we speak more about our reading today, we come together once more in song. Our next hymn is one of my favourites of old. It's Mission Praise 59, Blessed Assurance. Last week we looked at some of the advice that Paul gave when he wrote to the Philippian church. Through the Holy Spirit, Paul instructed them to continue to be motivated by how Christ lived and what he had done, rather than focus on something they had done. He wanted them to look to a Christ-like example on how to live 
and not be swayed or tricked into following the wrong example. And so he tells them to keep moving forward, growing in their faith by seeking after the same attitude that Christ had as they lived out their life in him. We also touched on the fact last week that Paul wrote this letter out of love, concern, and gratitude for them because of the help they had offered Paul through practical means by sending gifts and even people to assist him, and also spiritually through praying for him. One of the reasons Paul writes this letter to them while in prison is to say thank you for all the kindness and the things they had done. And so while writing, he feels the need to support and guide them by giving some pastoral advice on issues which he is concerned may take hold of them. For Paul's desire is that they remain united and one in Christ and not divided as some of Paul's other churches had become. In our reading today, Paul begins by reminding them that they already have fellowship with the Spirit. And so it is Christ that has made them strong. And so they are not to stray from this mindset by having a different mindset, one which follows selfish ambition or one which boasts. But stay united, having the same thoughts and sharing the same love by being humble with one another, considering each other's needs and not only their own. It is said that one aspect of being humble is holding a true reflection of oneself. We heard last week the comment which Paul made concerning himself, that regardless of his own achievements, he hadn't considered himself perfect yet. Well, some may think perfection is something that can be earned through leading a good and disciplined life or achieved through our own merits. This was not a belief that Paul held. For Paul knew that true perfection was only realized in the believer through the work of Christ, but not fully attained in this life. And so while all believers in Jesus are to strive for perfection, for God has commanded us, be holy, for I am holy, we do not achieve in this life our perfected, completed result. What we do, however, attain through the Holy Spirit is the desire to follow that path as Christ continually works in us, sanctifying us to help us change and grow. And so as Paul reminds us, our requirement to remain humble is being aware of our own imperfections which remain in us as we strive for that holiness in which we are called to live. I came across an article from an autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of America. It said that before he became known as one of America's great Americans through innovation as an an inventor, a scientist, and a great statesman, the young Benjamin Franklin became somewhat unhappy with the disorder of his life. And so he went to work on a project that he called Moral Perfection, which consisted of, of him making a list of 12 areas of attitude and action which needed improvement for him. He then asked a friend to look over his list, to which Franklin wrote in his autobiography. The man kindly informed me that I was generally thought proud, meaning that my pride showed itself frequently in conversation. And so humility would need to be the 13th virtue in my project. Possibly not the nicest thing for one to hear, but here he did. Throughout his life, he made many quotes about pride and humility and the search to discard one and try to achieve the other. Just one of the quotes he made of himself much later in life was that for him, humility 
regardless of how hard it is to find, proved to be worth the effort. For it made him, long after his quest for perfection had failed, to be less quick with a harsh word and more ready to listen, which he found helped restore his relationships with others. And so when we see ourselves in the light of humility and notice the lack of perfection in our own lives, then it softens our hearts, knowing that others aren't perfect either. And so opening up doors of understanding, consideration, communication, forgiveness, rebuilding, and love in us to reach out in our relationships with others. We see in God's word through Paul's many letters, through to the Psalms, Proverbs, the books of Peter, James, Matthew, Luke, Micah, and even Second Chronicles, to name just a few, where the theme of humility is presented over and over again, bringing to the reader's attention the importance and the necessity of possessing a humble heart. In Micah chapter 6, verse 6, it begins with a question. What shall I bring to the Lord, the God of heaven, when I come to worship him? Shall I bring the best of the offerings that I have? To which the response is no. And says what the Lord requires is this. Walk humbly in fellowship with the Lord. And so when we do that, as God has forgiven us, so too must we forgive others. As God has shown mercy to us, so too do we show mercy to others. As God loves the imperfect in us, so too do we love the imperfect in others. And so being humble is more than just a, a character trait, but is a mindset and a deep desire in the believer to turn from self to Christ more by being like Christ more. Walking humbly with God through the example of Christ is the real worship which God desires from us. We can also see other examples of humility in the book of Proverbs where God's word teaches when pride comes then comes disgrace but with humility comes wisdom. And another one says Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord and humility comes before honour does. And so lives lived in humility is to have reverence for God through knowing him and living according to his way. In other words, pride may be a common mindset, but it only leads to destruction. However, humility, recognising our own weaknesses, and the greatness of God causes us to depend more on him, which eventually, scripture says, leads to honour. Which is what Paul found in chapter 4 of this letter, when he says he found contentment in Christ, whether he had too little or too much, because he has the strength to face all conditions through the power that Christ offers him. The importance of humility for Paul was the recognition of his own dependence upon Jesus Christ. Because humility takes us from self to others, from pride to Christ. The dictionary defines humility as a, a modest opinion or estimate of one's own importance. This attitude does not come naturally for any of us which we could see in the article taken from Benjamin Franklin's autobiography of himself. For we naturally tend, and the world encourages us, to look to ourselves first. But God's word teaches not just a different way, but a better way. Because as the Bible says, God's word is good for teaching, guiding, rebuking, and correcting faults for right living in God's sight. And so for Paul, the strive to seek a humble heart was important 
because it has a bearing on not only how we faithfully serve Christ, but it has a bearing on how we faithfully serve one another in the body of Christ, which is the reason Paul urges them to stay clear of anything that could change them from this way of thinking or this path, because not individually, but together collectively, do they fully project outwardly the one body of Christ, which is the reflection that the church must have. And so Paul wanted their hearts to remain in Christ, not only for themselves, but for each other. By reminding them they were of one spirit and of one mind and holding on to one gospel. When hard times come to any church, it's easy for the church to fragment. But Paul wants to encourage and remind them that if and when these times come, they are to show unity together as the body of Christ and not be divided and so divide Christ. And so Paul then looks to give them the answers to these problems as he looks to advise them theologically through the things already taught by God in his word through seeking humility. But more particularly, Paul draws to their attention the greatest example of humility as he points them to the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul finds the only clear answer to pride, arrogance and disunity lies in directing their thinking towards Jesus through the choices he made. And he does this by reciting what reads like a type of poem or song, which we heard in our reading today, and which runs from verse 6 to 11. And so I'd like to remind us of the first three verses of this, which I think Bill is going to put up on the screen behind us. And this reads, He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to remain equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death his death on the cross. This poem or song is often referred to as the kenosis hymn. Kenosis is a Greek word which means emptying. And the emptying with which these verses are speaking of here is the emptying of Christ. Not just in his incarnation, being born into the world as the Son of God and refusing to hold on to his divine privileges, but in obedience, by accepting the human condition and dying the death of a slave, by enduring the cross of the crucifixion. When we say that Christ emptied his, himself, it's important to note that he did not empty himself of his divine nature, for he was still fully God. What he did empty himself of was the privileges that a fully divine God possessed. For although he still remained fully God, he was not now only fully God. For Jesus was now fully human too. And so equally was vulnerable as he possessed the ability to experience physical pain, temptation, suffering and death as a consequence of his human condition too. And so although Christ was fully God, he didn't cling to his Godhood as something to be used for him alone or for his own selfish gain, but gave something of his glory up through humility by putting humanity's interests and needs above his own, because it was the only means through which to save us. And so Paul draws to our attention the example of Christ's choice of humility, putting others before himself as the example that all believers in the body of Christ should exemplify 
and display too. Through Christ's act of obedience and humility, God raised him up, and Paul says, gave him the name above every other name to whom every knee shall bow. This description that Paul applies to the exalted Jesus is the same title given to God by the prophet Isaiah centuries before. And so this then was the Christ to whom the Philippians were to bend their knees in worship. In Paul's counsel to them, he is saying, if they would allow this truth to control their heart and their very being, then arrogance, pride, conceit and quarrelling, which picks away at Christian unity, would find no root in them. In other words, they were to imprint on their hearts above all else, the name above all names, the one they served, their Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Paul wrote this letter not to bring them down, but to lift them up in Christ. For they were people whom he loved and longed to see again. For near the end of this letter, Paul describes them as his joy and his crown. Through his genuine love and concern for them, he wanted to overflow them with more and more knowledge so they would have a full insight into Christ's complete work in them. So that in the day of the Lord, as Paul called it, they might be pure and blameless before him. And so Paul continues his advice to keep working with fear and trembling, knowing that we serve a holy and righteous God and to serve him with reverence and awe through humility, knowing that God is at work in us to make us willing and able to obey all of his purposes in our lives. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and seek after his righteousness. And thereafter, all we need to follow and serve him, God will provide. And so we will not be found lacking in humility, faithfulness, forgiveness, or love, as the Holy Spirit aids us when we seek to remain in Jesus, even though we may stumble because we are not yet perfect. We have confidence in Christ who is, and who has already won the prize which is waiting for us. And so on finishing, one final point we might take with us as we continue our own journey is to be sure that we take the Lord with us, but in humility. Because no matter what we try to do in life, we need the Lord, not ourselves, to succeed. And equally important for us is to remain in God's word and keep it close to our heart as a reminder of who we are and how our Lord Jesus has called us to live. It is a reminder of the cost that God paid and also the victory our Lord Jesus Christ won, which is the real joy that we can take with us each day. As God calls us to work together faithfully and serve with humility, being united through one body of Christ, which is his church, for his glory and for his glory alone. Amen. Let's once more continue to worship God now through song with our next hymn, which is Mission Praise 590. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Please stand once more if you can.
Alex Fraser through a recording is now going to lead all of us in prayer together as we now pray for others. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with things in our minds, from our families and from our work. Help us to lay them down and find your space and wishes. We seek together a new way of doing things. We thank you for all that makes life rich and full for us, for the new life made possible for us in Jesus Christ. We pray for our country, that Christian values will determine our actions and be the inspiration for our leaders. Help us to be agents of healing where there is division in relationships or in communities. We pray for people in communities whose lives are empty. Help us to be the channels of your love and compassion. We thank you for this church, the place, the history and what it's meant for generations of people living near. Thank you for the people who have flowed in and out through the doors, faithful or searching, joyful or sad, hopeful or anxious. Thank you for the part this church has played in the lives of so many and the way the love of God has been made known in worship and service of others. Lord of the Church, we pray for the churches near us with their own treasured story. We pray for their well-being and for created relationships across the network of local churches, each centred on Christ and longing to make him known. In particular, we pray for the use of our church, for your purposes in the community and for our present and future membership and organisations. We want to be useful to you. We want to be useful to the church. We want to be useful to the gospel message. Empower us by your spirit and order our steps according to your word. May we be thorough and sincere in everything we do. May we be more faithful and more useful. May we glorify and worship you. Lord, release us from selfish ambition and conceit, which damage our relationships and keep us stuck in prideful attitudes that separate us from you. Please give us a spirit of humility and a heart of service. Remind us in the moment to keep the interests of others in mind as we go about our day and as we react to hard situations. Help us to be obedient to God, no matter what it takes. Jesus is an ultimate example of obedience and humility. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to walk in his ways, following his example. Thank you for your word and unending love. We pray for ourselves. Help us not to turn inwards, but help us to be drawn outwards by the love of God so that we can be channels of sharing your love with people around us. Grant us the mind of Christ. Teach us to be humble like Christ. Help us to be compassionate like Christ and help us to join with Christ in building our church and community. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our final hymn today is another more recent favourite of mine through its positive message to all believers. It's Mission Praise number 32, and it's called An Army of Ordinary People. So please, let's stand once more if we can to worship God as we sing together.
we now finish our service with this closing prayer. Heavenly Father, as we leave here today, continue to remind us that becoming humble is one way we grow more like our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And even though we may stumble from time to time, we pray that you would continue to shape our hearts and our minds to do your will in the body of Christ as we seek to serve through love each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.